So momentum is a very important topic. And for a start, momentum refers to the product of mass and velocity, which is basically the quantity of motion possessed by a body. So mass multiplied by velocity gives us the SI unit as kg dot meters per second. Then if you talk about the principle of conservation of momentum, here we are looking at what happens before and after an impact. The total momentum must be maintained, meaning that the total momentum that was there before should be equal to the total momentum even after the impact has taken place. So this is it. M1U1 plus M2U2 refers to the momentum before impact, where we introduce the V, that's for the final. M1V1 and M2V2. The principle of conservation of energy is also involved because we want to account for every sort of energy involved during and after the collision. Now, we basically have three types of impact or three types of collisions. There is elastic, inelastic, as well as partially elastic collisions. If you are talking about an inelastic collision, this is a kind of collision where the two bodies have to move out with a common velocity. In other words, they stick together and then move away with one velocity. In other words, V1 is the same as V2. So in this case, it means if you can represent V1 and V2 by just common letter V. So you have M1V1 plus M1U1 plus M2U2 being equal to M1 plus M2, then outside the brackets, V. So V is our common velocity for the two bodies. Elastic. For an elastic collision, the two bodies normally have to move out with different velocities. So then the formula we have to use is the one for conservation of momentum before and after impact. Just this one here, M1U1 plus M2U2 is equal to M1V1 plus M2V2. In addition to that, we also have to introduce the coefficient of restitution equation, which is V1 minus V2 divided by U2 minus U1, or V1 minus V2 divided by a U2 negative open brackets, U1 minus U2. So in a, in a collision which is perfectly elastic or simply elastic, the coefficient of restitution is one. So E is equal to one. Then partially elastic, the value is between zero and one. Partially elastic, it's between zero and one. So you cannot have zero or one, but any numbers between the two. And the formulas you are going to use are the same, the same ones we're using for elastic. Now with this, let's try to look at an example where we have a body of mass 0.5 kg, speed, 10 meters per second, and it's running at, uh, of course, 10, it's, it's going in the eastern direction. Then it has to collide with another body, mass 1.2 kg. Then it's moving at seven meters per second in the opposite direction. So the condition is that assuming they stick together after the collision, then what will be that velocity? So that's what we have to. So we have this and what we've been told is that um, if you look at the aspect of the other body moving in the opposite direction, means that we have to be very careful with the sign because velocity is a vector quantity. M1 is 0 0.5 kg. It's moving at 10 meters per second or positive 10 meters per second. M2 is 1.2 kg, then U2 is negative seven meters per second. V, we don't know. 
as the one we want, V being the common velocity. So we have to use the formula for an inelastic collision. So this is the one we have here. If you look at an inelastic collision, you say M1U1 plus M2U2 is equal to, in the brackets, M1 plus M2, then outside we have V. Substituting, we have, where is M1? 0 0.5, U1, 10, M2 is 1.2, then U2 is negative seven. So simplifying all that, on the other side is 0 0.5 plus 1.2, and this side gives us 1.7. The other side is 5 minus 8.4. The answer from there is giving us V being negative 2 meters per second. Now, negative 2 meters per second, interpreting it means that this value, this direction we assume to be negative, which was uh, western. That's where the two bodies will move after the collision. So they will move due west. Then let's look at the second one. The second one is talking about a body moving at 30 meters per second with a mass 4 kg, collides with another body of mass 10 kg, moving in the same direction at 4 meters per second. So we require to find the resulting velocities, assuming it's elastic, or the value of small letter e is 0.6. So first, U1 is 30 meters per second. Mass number one is four kg. Then U2, four meters per second. These are moving in the same direction, so it's fine, they can both be positive. M2, 10 kg, then small letter E is one. Substituting in the equation we have for momentum. So for M1, we put four, U1, 30, M2, in fact, it's, it's the other way around. M2 is actually 10, then moving at four. So on the other side, four V1 plus 10 V2. Here we handle all the numbers four by 10, four by 30. When we simplify, it will end up being two V1 plus five V2. Now here, I have to agree that when you add these, the numbers are normally bigger, we end up being much bigger. But divide through by two, that's how you end up with equation one, but the numbers can be much bigger. So 2v1 plus 5v2, we leave it like that as our first equation. We'll come back to it very soon. The next thing we do is go back to the coefficient of restitution, which we said v1 minus v2, over negative v1 minus u2. So v1 minus v2 remains like that. Then we have negative v1 minus v2. Now here, if you cross multiply, first of all, 30 minus four will give us 26. So there's a negative outside, it will give us negative 26. Cross multiplying now gives us the, the other equation there. V1 minus V2 being equal to negative 26. So here we can get rid of this V2 by adding both sides by V2, or we allow the V2 to cross the equal sign so that we now have a simplified equation for V1. V1 is equal to V2, take away 26. That's our equation two. Now here we can now substitute equation one in equation two, rather the other way around. Let's take we're substituting for V1 in the first expression. So what we get is two, instead of two V1, where there's V1, we bring the expression we have here. So two, where there's V1, we have V2 minus 26 plus, then we write what happens after that, which is five V2 equals 80. Opening the brackets and simplifying, we end up with seven V2 equals 132. We divide through by seven, our V2 is 18.857. What you do in between may not matter because this is just basic algebra and we have a simultaneous equation. Whichever method you decide to use is up to how simple you want it to be. 
Now here we found V2, let's find V1. We already have an expression for V1 here. V1 is V2 minus 26. So since V2 is 18, we put 18.857 minus 26. The answer, negative 7.143, that's in meters per second. Moving on, the third or the B part was asking, what if this collision is now partially elastic with E being equal to 0 0.6? So one thing you will notice is we'll still start from there where we have M1U1 plus M2U2 is equal to M1V1 plus M2V2. We substitute everything and the equation will still come out as 2V1 plus 5V2 equals 80. But the difference is here on the part of the coefficient of restitution, we used E for perfect elastic, but for partial elasticity in a collision, we're going to use 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 is equal to V1 minus V2 over, then there's 30 minus 4. So 0 0.6 of the 26 we had ends up being 15.6 with a negative. So once again, we're making V1 the subject. So we have V1 equals V2 minus 15.6. With that equation, we go back to our first equation, substitute 2V1 plus 5V2, where there's V1, we are putting this expression here. So we have two, V2 take away 15.6 in the brackets plus, then we're writing everything else, plus five V2 is equal to 80. Then from here, when you simplify and collect the like terms together, you have seven V2 being equal to 111.2. So divide both sides by seven, our V2 will be 15.886. Then we had our expression for V1, which was V1 is equal to V2 take away 15.6. Meaning we substitute here for V2, 15.86 minus 15.6. And our answer is V1 equals 0 0.286. So that is how you handle now the one for partially elastic. And the difference, like we said, is just in the way the numbers are interacting. There we had one, but in this case, we have 0 0.6 for coefficient of restitution. Finally, we have a gun whose mass is 1.5 kg, releases a bullet of 80 grams, which recalls the gun is recoiling at three meters per second. Then it hits into a block of mass 3 kg and remains embedded in the block, thereby allowing the block and the bullet to move away together. Determine the velocity with which the bullet leaves the gun. Next, the velocity with which the block and the bullet move away together. Now, here are some facts about this. Before the gun is fired, its velocity is zero. Before the bullet is fired, it's also zero. Its velocity is zero. And the mass of the gun is 1.5 kg. Mass of the bullet, which is mass two, is 80 grams. So we say 80 divided by 1,000. So what we get there is 0 0.08 kg. Recoiling means it's moving in the opposite direction. And this is the final velocity after firing. So V1, meaning the velocity of the gun, is negative three meters per second. V2, which is the velocity of the bullet, we don't know. Simple as that, we can now substitute in the momentum equation. So here, the initial velocity for both of them is zero. Substituting for that, so where there's U1, zero, U2, zero. Then on the other side, we have um, M1, which is 1.5, then multiplied by, this is the mass of the gun by its velocity, which is negative three, added to 0 0.08 V2. So here we are simply saying, this one, 1.5 by negative three gives us negative 4.5.
And this is the one which can go to the other side of the echo sign. And then we divide through by 0 0.08. So 4.5 divided by 0 0.08, it gives us our V2 being 56.25. Now let's move away from scenario one. Scenario two is the B part, which says with what velocity with the block and the bullet, the two of them as a unit, are they move, going to move away together? So this means we're talking about an inelastic collision. To avoid confusion, you also write its own data. Mass number two, which is that of the gun, or rather the bullet, 0 0.08. Mass number three, in this case, which is the block, is three kg. The bullet is initially running at 56.25, because this is the velocity before it hits the target. Then the velocity, the initial velocity of the block is zero. The final velocity, which is the common one for both of them, we don't know. So we go back to the expression for an inelastic collision where we have M2, U2 added to M3, U3 equals M2 plus M3, then V outside. Don't need to worry about the numbers. Remember in the original equation, we're using one and two, but this time it's two and three. The expression, the principle still remains the same. So here I have 0 0.08 times 56.25 added to three multiplied by zero is equal to 0 0.08 plus three, then V is outside. So everything on the other side, then we divide by, meaning we're saying 0 0.08 times 56.25, which gives us 4.5. We will divide now by 3.08. So the combination, the two of them are finally going to run at a velocity of 1.461 meters per second in the direction of the bullet. So that is our um, momentum when we're introducing it. You can also take your time to look at the exercise. I think you have just put up five questions. Enjoy going through them one by one.